About 180 miles northeast of Cairo is the small Muslim village of Ezbet Rushdi, known as Tel El Daba. The fields outside of Ezbet Rushdi were first excavated in 1885 by Swiss archaeologist and biblical scholar Henry Edouard Neville, and the site has been the source of multiple digs and just as many opinions as to whether this is the ancient city of Avarice. Once the capital city of Hyksos and home to an ancient Semitic people, possibly the descendants of Jacob and his family. This is thought to be what the Bible calls the land of Goshen. Justin, my brother-in-law, traveled with us as our story producer and helped me visualize what it may have been like for the Hebrews to live in a place like this. Well, this is a huge contrast from being in Cairo yesterday and visiting with Miriam, more rural, but we're still surrounded by apartments and a school and mosques. Yeah, you can hear the mosque. And actually, when we flew into Egypt, yeah. I wasn't expecting it to be quite that brown. This is very, very different. Right. Where we are is Tel El Daba. Right. Tel El Daba has significance because this location is believed to be one of the two store cities that Pharaoh had the Israelites build, Ramses. Mm -hmm. It's also known as Avaris. So you can see some of the dig sites that they brought out here. Mm -hmm. There's an Austrian team back in the late 90s, went on through the first, what, decade of the 21st century. Mm -hmm. So part of the story here is just how much the Israelites would have actually loved living in this land of Goshen. Right, so Genesis and following that family gets us down into Egypt because Exodus 1 talks about 70 people came down right. when they came down with Israel's family as they came down to be delivered by Joseph. And so there are some people that speculate maybe one of the palaces that was found here at Tel El Daba may have been Joseph's palace. It's pretty cool actually yeah. looking at the evidence because some of it just, it doesn't fit Egypt, right. but it has like an Egypt flavor to it. So it's one of those things that you start to read Exodus and it almost feels like a fairy tale. Yeah. And it's until you start seeing, oh, there are actual places, locations that we're looking around us and we can see dig sites where, no, the, the Semitic people had a presence here. This right. event really did happen. Now let's get on to the important thing, which is the story that they went through. Right. There actually, there's still a lot of pot shards around and it's I don't know, it's exciting to me. This is my first time in a situation like this. Right. These, it's like 3,000 years old worth of history, but people just walking by and using it in yeah. each way. But like, yeah, there's nothing to see here. Right. So there's a guy that's associated with the site. He works here. He's given us permission to go and take a look at some of the things that they found here. Um, they were afraid that if they left them out, that people would have taken them. So they've put them, some of them are on display. Some of them are in storage. Our fixer has negotiated with them and the team is gonna be able to go and take a look at some of this. So I have no idea what town we're in. We got about two thirds of the way to, and met up with some local police. I think sometimes I don't appreciate the threat that's probably there. So this kind of brings things back to reality. So they just took the camera down. We're waiting outside the gate. There's the police, the national security, and the army. And we need to get permits for all of them. So we're waiting right now. And hopefully, I saw one that is We got permission to go look at these publicly displayed archaeological discoveries from Tel Al Daba. Not sure what they're going to be, but I'm going to go with my camera and we'll just see what uh, God has provided for us here. They gave us permission to come down and look at some of the pieces they sent up to this museum, and one of them is pretty amazing. You know, we were talking about Abraham and the promise that he received, and then talking about Joseph being sold into Egypt and how God used that providentially to preserve his family. Uh, 
so his father and his brothers and their families all come down, 70 people come down to Egypt. And then you get to Exodus, where there's a pharaoh who comes to power that doesn't know Joseph and his family. We're told that there were some items here that were found there during the Austrians' archaeological dig over approximately 30 years. You see these canopic jars, which would have been used during burial. And what's interesting at in Tel Adaba is the burial practices were not like the burial practices of Egyptians. They were more Semitic in nature, and then they changed over time and included some Egyptian practices, but they never fully became Egyptian from what I understand. So you also have this coffin. You see the lid, and then even on this side, you see even smaller coffins that would have been used for children. Which when you think about the Exodus story, especially uh, Exodus chapter one. And then another thing that we've been trying to learn more about are all these little small statues that indicated the wealth of the people that lived there. All of those came from Tel Adaba. And so there was a long period of time in that town's history, that city's history, where they were really wealthy and they were doing really well, which is consistent with why Joseph's family came down in the first place. It was to promote life, and they did really well until that Pharaoh arose that didn't know him. There is a tension that exists in our minds, knowing that Egypt was not merely a place of slavery and oppression, but also a place of refuge and safety. It's fascinating to think about how in the Exodus story, You've got Egypt is a place of slavery you want to get out of. In the Jesus story, Egypt was a haven for a time. And both phrases, out of Egypt, I call my son, get Israel out and get Jesus out. As it's just fascinating to, to get a fuller narrative. God has plans for Egypt. And, and it's not all punitive. Yeah. Some of it is helping further the Savior. Um, yeah. He's bringing salvation about through Egypt. 